What is up guys, my name is Brandon Robles and I am back with the best sales of the week, number nine. This video has some pretty cool stuff we'll be talking about, some pretty unique stuff that I haven't usually sold in my store, just like last week, um, and I'm excited to talk about it. So this first sale is Mastering the Art of French Cooking. It was Julia Child. It was a little two book set, not little, they're actually pretty thick books, um, with the dust jacket, and they ended up selling for $35. That probably took three days to sell um, because of my pricing. I was happy with it. Uh, I ended up flying off the shelf very quickly, um, 35 bucks. So these next three sales actually went to one person, and I sold a bunch of podiatry books for feet feet doctor. Um, I actually sold two books for $30 each and I actually sold a lot for $12. It was three books that just weren't worth it that I decided to bundle. He ended up buying them from me. I don't have a picture for that third one. But these two books, um, yeah, pretty high price for these books. They've, I've held on to them for quite a while, um, which was why I was happy when he offered them for a reasonable price. I think I had them for like 40, 50 or even 60, but $30 offers for something I've had for a while. I'm happy with that. So this next sale was really cool to deal with. It was a West Point, um, like a, a yearbook-ish kind of thing. Um, and it was a signed copy from 1956. It was pretty cool. Um, I looked through it, took a lot of pictures, and it was just cool to deal with. I ended up selling for $22. Um, just something cool to deal with. I love military history, so that's really cool. This next sale was an architectural uh, book, and this one was pretty big. I mean, this one was a pretty thick, big, heavy book. I sold it for $20. I think I got an offer on it. Um, the customer certainly paid shipping for this, and um, but pretty cool sale nonetheless. I don't think there was any listed, none sold. It's one of those ones where someone is just browsing on eBay, I guess, and finds something interesting that they are willing to buy. So um, 20 bucks for this book that um, hasn't sold before. So I actually sold another French cookbook from Julia Child. It was a different book. Um, I sold that for $22.50. It was a first edition with a dust jacket from a library, as I've mentioned before. Um, not bad for a former library book that sold at market price. So this next sale wasn't like huge at all. It was just something that I don't usually deal with. So it was like this painting kind of sketch of a bar in Key West and I sold it for $10. And so it's not that much, but it was really like cardboard. It was thin, pretty small. And um, I was like, I don't think this would really sell. But I looked and saw some people that listed it. I think I listed it for like $14.99 and someone offered 10 pretty quickly. That was pretty surprising because I thought it would sit on there and just never sell. Kind of opened my mind a little bit to other things, what people buy on eBay. Because that one really surprised me. No sold comps or anything. So that was kind of cool. Um, but yeah, I was just kind of shocked by it. Just uh, the weirdest things, even a small sale, like $10. But it's the fact that what it, what it was that sold. So I sold this limited edition Franklin Library, um, was on sale from 45, I think to 3150, sold for 3150, not mad about it. Even though our sale is being run on it, I'm cool with it because that's still $30 for a book that was sitting there. So pretty good sale. So when you have a store, you'll start noticing trends. People will actually visit your store and browse through all your listings. And a lot of times they'll make offers or buy stuff that is similar. Like it's like walking into an actual store like a Walmart or something and you're just kind of browsing and just, oh, I'll take this, I'll take that. Well, this person did that and it wasn't a huge sale. It was only $18, but um, it was a bunch of language books. It was a German book and a French book and it was just how to learn the languages. Um, it was like little pocket books. They were very small books, but um, it's kind of cool. They had no relation to each other. I never actually referred to either one of them on each listing. But the person went there, they browsed my store, they saw stuff that they were interested in, and decided to buy them. 
just kind of cool. It, it, it really made me think about it's, it's a genuine store that people are coming to browse and buy. Sold another Franklin Library book. This one was also on sale, sold for $40. Very beautiful book. The weirdest book sell, guys. Um, this was a cookbook, the Fleischmann's cookbook. Um, I have a couple of these right now. Well, this one was pamphlet size, or at least thick wise. It was very thin, uh, maybe a little wider than a pamphlet for sure, but, um, but it sold for $14.99. That did not take any time to sell. I don't know what's in them. I don't know what the heck it is. I'm assuming this one's German. It sounds German, I don't know. But cookbooks, guys, that are literally small. I don't know what's in these things, but someone paid $15 for it. I'm not familiar with this book. It's called The New Scientific. Um, it was a paperback book, vintage. It ended up selling for $31.50. I've had it for a little while, but not too long. Um, but $30 for a little paperback book. This next sale was actually a DVD and book combo set. Um, if you guys aren't familiar with it, it's the Great Courses. These are pretty good little bundles that you can find or run across at libraries and stuff. And a lot of times it comes with a DVD with the case and a book. Well, this one was actually brand new, still wrapped. Um, I listed it and that sold for $33.99 pretty quickly. Um, if you guys ever run across these, these are usually pretty good. Um, I've never had a problem with them. I've picked them up at library sales for like $4 and easily sold them for $20, $30, $40. Um, pretty consistently, pretty quickly. So um, be on the lookout for these if you don't know about them. And if you know about them, you know these things sell pretty good. So I sold another little Hummel figure. Um, this is probably my fourth, fifth one sold now. And um, it was literally this big, little angel. It sold for $23. That's not that bad for something that size. Um, will be shipped priority, such as the last ones, with the insurance. So, because um, it's fragile, it's, it's porcelain. So, um, but $23 for a little tiny figure. This one's kind of cool. It is a like, it's a fairy tales. The name looks German. I think it was in English, um, but it was a little tiny book. I mean, like this big. Um, it sold for $9.99. I thought I'd just show it because there wasn't anything on eBay. And um, I don't even know what it is. It could have been rare. It could be worth like $60. I don't know. But how would I know if there's no proof of it, right? Unless you do like intense research. So I listed it for 10, well, $9.99 and um, it sold pretty quick. So uh, you guys can, I mean, definitely take the time if you think something's rare. I'd like to try to find stuff if I know it's worth money. Yeah, you want to research it. But um, when it didn't really look like anything, looked like a little kid's book, I just went ahead and listed it and it sold quick. So this week I actually sold another one of those polio books, just like last week, those cookbooks. I don't know what is up with these things. I sold this one for $34.95. I don't know what's in them. A different edition too. It wasn't the same as the other two. Um, $34.95 for a pamphlet. For a cookbook pamphlet, actually. So, I, I don't know what else to say. I don't have any words for that. And the last book I sold was this really cool gun book that I picked up at a library sale months ago. I've had this thing for quite a while. I knew it had some value, um, but I, I listed it a long time, not gonna lie, and I'm kind of happy it sold because this thing was massive. It was a huge book um, and it took up a lot of shelf space, but pretty much worth the wait. It was sold for $80. Um, it probably stuck on the shelf a little longer than I was hoping, even for the $80 range. But when it sold, it felt pretty good to get that $80 for this book that I think I picked up for like $5. So um, either way you look at it, it's still 80 bucks in the bank from uh, a book, from a book. All right, so my FBA sales this week were up higher than last week, but not quite as high as I want it to be. I ended up selling $480. That definitely beat last week, so like 200 and something. So we're definitely doubling, but we're not quite. We're at that $600, $700 range where I was a couple weeks ago. Now eBay, eBay did pretty good. This week I did 1,019 on eBay. So that saw a massive spike compared to last week and the last couple of weeks. Um, so I'm really happy about that. So eBay has certainly been working for me, showing a lot of focus on that. I would love to have my FBA also working for me when I'm just setting stuff in, forgetting about it, letting it sell, and I'm focusing on the eBay listing and shipping it myself. Nonetheless, progress has been made. 
more sales have been made, and that is a good sign. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Comment down below with any questions you may have, or DM me at the Brain and Robas on Instagram. Stay hustling, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.